Today, we're going to be making a basic character controller to move our game characters around within the Unity scene. So stick around if you want to learn exactly how that's done. So this is the character controller we're going to be making today. It's pretty basic. It's just got some simple movements and a jump, but that's all we need to get started. I've got a character pack you can download completely for free. So if you're interested in following along with exactly how I do this tutorial, the link will be in the description down below. It's a sick Spaceman, you should definitely check it out. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the Spaceman asset pack. I'm going to double click that one in my downloads folder so it appears in my Unity inspector. I'm just going to go ahead and import. And then with that done, we'll be able to see it in our packages folder within our directory. We're going to use this Spaceman prefab later on in our tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly where you can find new animations in Mixamo. So if you head over to the website Mixamo and log in, you'll be able to add your own character, in my case the Spaceman, to your Mixamo profile. There'll be an option to let Mixamo rig your character, and then afterwards you'll be able to use all of the animations Mixamo has on offer. You can search for custom animations in the top left, and once you have an animation selected, I like to tick the In Place checkbox to make sure my character doesn't move around the scene. Feel free to download a few animations to test out in your game. Now let's jump into our Unity scene. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using Cinemachine. So I'm going to go into my Package Manager. And in there, I'm going to make sure that I've got the Unity registry displayed. And then we'll want to make sure that the Cinemachine package is installed. I've already got this installed, but make sure you do too. Next, we'll go ahead and create our character controller script, and then we can go and jump into the code. To start things off, let's go ahead and create our variables. So we've got a bunch of public variables which we'll use to control a lot of the behaviors of our character controller within the inspector. These are things like the move speed and the jump heights. And then we've got a bunch of private variables in our class which we'll also use to create the functionality of our character controller. So within our start method, we'll want to set up our animator and rigid body by getting those components. Now the first thing I'm going to do in our update loop is check if we're grounded, which will come in handy later when we're implementing our jumping mechanics. So we'll go ahead and do a sphere cast using the physics check sphere method, and we'll want to pass in our ground checker position, the ground distance, and then finally we're also going to need to pass in the ground layer to cast on. We'll also need to make sure that we ignore trigger collisions, so let's go ahead and add that in as the last parameter. With our grounded check out of the way, I'm going to go and implement our input system to handle the movement of the player. So let's set our inputs variable to vector 3, 0. Next, I'll want to retrieve both horizontal and vertical inputs and set those up as the input x and z respectively. Now that we've got our inputs set up every update, let's go ahead and do something with them. So the first thing I'll do is set the character's forward direction to be wherever the input is looking at. So let's check with an if statement that the inputs are not equal to vector 3, 0. And if they aren't, we'll want to set our forward vector to be equal to the inputs. Next, we'll tell our animator to animate according to whatever inputs we're passing in. We'll do this by calling animator set float, and we'll need to pass in the name of the parameter within our animator controller, which I believe is forward. As a second parameter within this method, we'll need to pass in the magnitude of inputs. To make sure that our movement is smooth, we're going to set that one up in the fixed update method. Now within there, we'll want to grab our rigid body and call the move position method. As the parameter, we'll pass in the current rigid body's position, added by the current inputs, multiplied by the speed, and finally multiplied by the fixed delta time. So with our movement out of the way, let's go ahead and finish off that jumping implementation. We'll want to start out by adding a new if statement into our update loop. Within this if statement, there's two things we need to check. The first being our jumping input. So let's go ahead and add inputs.getButtonDown jump as the parameter. And then the second condition we need to check is if it's grounded. So if both of these conditions are met, we'll want to add force to our rigid body to simulate the player jumping. Within this method, we'll need to multiply vector3 up by a square root function where we'll want to pass in the jump height multiplied by negative 2 and multiplying that by physics, gravity's y-axis. The reason we need to multiply it by negative 2 here is because gravity by default is going down, so we need to invert that number. Now the second parameter we need to add to our add force method is the force mode. So let's go ahead and set that one up as velocity change. 
Now the final thing we need to do before we can jump back into the Unity scene is add the jump animation. So let's call the animator and set its trigger to jump. So with Cinemachine already installed, let's go ahead and add our virtual camera. Now we'll need to make sure that the Cinemachine brain component has been added to our main camera. For our virtual camera to work, we'll need a target for it to either look at or follow. So let's go ahead and add our player, the spaceman, to our scene. At this point, you can use whatever character you have for your game. Just follow along with the steps. We'll want to add a rigid body and a box collider to our game object. Now go ahead and align the box collider to your character. Now let's add the character controller script that we just wrote to our character game object. The last thing we need to do is populate the variables within our character controller component. So let's create a new game object as a child of our character game object and call that grounded. And we'll want to link that one to our ground check variable. Now let's make sure that the ground layer is set to grounded as well, and that we've got a game object in the scene that's considered our floor, which has the grounded layer. So with our character controller done, let's make sure that our virtual camera is looking at the character game object in the scene. So go ahead and link that one now. With all that done, once we hit play, we should be able to see our character controller working in the game view. Now this character controller is very basic, but I feel like it's a great starting point to start adding additional functionality on top to fit whatever game you're making. Let me know if you want to see me expand on this character controller with more tutorials, or if you want me to do a detailed explanation on Cinemachine. Thanks for following along with how to make a basic character controller. As always, there'll be a link in the description down below where you can download all of the project files for free. If you have any ideas for what you want to see in the next tutorial, leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can get to it. If you're enjoying the content, feel free to drop a subscribe as it lets me know that you like what you see. Thanks for watching and have a great day.